ADHD Awareness Month. Reframing ADHD. Discovering new perspectives. most important thing to remember is that ADHD is a neurodevelopmental condition. It begins in early childhood and for at least, you know, 40 to 60 percent, perhaps even more, people continues into adulthood. But what happens, I think, earlier is that one, certainly when perhaps there are more supports in place, or even if there aren't, there has been a tendency to assign those symptoms that go along with ADHD to something else. And one of the things that I do think has changed, and certainly over my 35 year uh, career, is that uh, there's greater awareness in schools. Um, I, you know, speak not infrequently to groups of teachers, school psychologists, there's a greater awareness. And because children are getting a more accurate diagnosis, perhaps earlier, their parents are a part of that process. And I will, you know, often speak to, with parents who will say, oh my goodness, I had all those same symptoms in early childhood. I had no idea that this was a condition that could be treated, that someone could do something about. I was just told I was not trying hard enough and that if I just buckled down and paid attention, I would be just fine. So I do think that there is a greater awareness out in the culture about um, the nature of inattention and the impact that it can have on our lives, on our academic lives, on our work lives, and on our interpersonal lives. I think a really important aspect of ADHD to remember, because it is a neurodevelopmental condition, is that the symptoms change over time. So what might be prominent when someone is five or six may be very different at 30. You know, at five or six, you know, the main demands are, you know, can you sit in a circle in kindergarten and first grade and pay attention to the teacher? And, you know, the region of our brain that kind of helps us to plan and think ahead and, you know, organize ourselves, you know, is, is the frontal lobes of the brain. And so much of early childhood, we have parents and teachers who act as kind of frontal lobe assistants. And as we get older, we, you know, no longer have that uh, assistance. So in, you know, adolescents, in, you know, college uh, students, in, you know, adults who are out in the working world, sometimes you have people who are underemployed because, you know, they have trouble meeting all the different demands that are involved in working in a job where there isn't someone there to kind of, you know, cut pieces into um, chunks uh, for them. Uh, we often hear from women that, you know, they were doing really well, you know, until they got married and began to have children. And suddenly they had to not only be the frontal lobes for their own lives, but also had to coordinate the lives for their children as well and other people, you know, in their family. So it's this multitasking, this having to be able to have focused attention on many different things at the same time is how the symptoms can change over time and why things may look different in early childhood, but look, you know, somewhat altered uh, in adulthood. The mission of ADHD Awareness Month is to educate the public about ADHD by sharing reliable information based on scientific and peer-reviewed research. ADHD Awareness Month is brought to you by ACO, the ADHD Coaches Organization. 
ADDA, the Attention Deficit Disorder Association, and by CHAD, Children and Adults with ADHD, in partnership with ADHD Europe.